If you dive, even in broad daylight, in a submarine, you see more shades of blue than there are names for blue. From pale to the ultra dark, ultraviolet, and then it's black. I'm Sylvia Earle. I'm an explorer in residence at the National Geographic. And this is my desk. This place this has been a busy place with kids, with cats, with dogs, with horses. We always have critters of all sorts. My mentor here, who keeps me on my toes, is just a lovely green moray. But this is a particularly handsome one, and about the right size too, although they can get much bigger. Haha. <laughs> one actually occupied the area around where I lived underwater in 1970 for two weeks. We got to know that particular green moray, and I became fascinated with the way that you could tell fish apart. They have faces. My mom was known as the bird lady of the neighborhood, and she would take in any critter. She's like my daughter. Well, all of my children, and I think the grandchildren, have that empathy for life. That's where I first learned to swim. <laughs> I was born in New Jersey. That's where I first got knocked over by a wave. The ocean got my attention and kept my attention. When I was a kid, I just thought horseshoe crabs were the coolest creatures on the planet. I, I felt so superior to my, the adults that would come around and say, oh, don't touch that thing. It'll kill you. It'll spike you with that tail. And I thought, you know, what are they talking about? These are great guys. And anybody, if they have the attitude of a child, can figure that out. I think I'm asked sometimes, how did you get to be a, a biologist? How did you get to be a scientist? How did you get to be an explorer? And I say, it's really easy. You start out as a little kid, and then you never grow up. This is where I collect the medals. It's a Medal of Honor from the Dominican Republic. National Women's Hall of Fame, woo -hoo. Order of the Golden Ark. Um, this is an ear bone from a rough-toothed dolphin. I do most of my shopping in museum stores or aquarium stores. This reached out its tentacle and grabbed me. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find when you go diving. And then there's this, the shrunken head. It went down to 500 meters and squeeze, squeeze the bubbles out of the head. All cups that have made the descent. Oh, you put them in a knit bag and just hang them outside. This little cup went down with me to the bottom of Crater Lake, and I was able to, all by myself, drive this little submarine down. And it's a submarine, the deep rover, that um, exists because of the company that I co-founded. The first company I started and the others that have followed have been dedicated to the idea of trying to get to the deepest part of the ocean. <laughs> Round trip. This is, this is phase one. Doo -doo -doo. This sphere is just a mock-up. Want me to get inside? It's a great place to dream. <laughs> a great place to think about what it will take to go to full ocean depth, to go find Jim Cameron's footprints. It's just uh, waiting the will to make these things happen. I have the will, I just don't have pockets deep enough. But one of the reasons for starting three companies was based on the desire to make something happen and you can start from scratch more easily sometimes than you can break into an existing structure. During the dives in 1970, when I became, I thought, an aquanaut, but they insisted on calling the women aqua babes and aqua bells and aqua chicks, anything but aquanauts. I think about astronauts, if the men had been called astro hunks, <laughs> what would they have thought? Well, the social structure is such that 
men are kind of expected to do certain things and they're encouraged and girls have to do it because they really want to do it and because they're willing to put up with the resistance or the condescension and so it's perhaps forced me to be somewhat more independent than I might have been had I been a guy where and I might have gone a different direction. The, the really ironic thing about those of us who are so determined to go diving that we do what it takes to get the funds together to build our own submarine, the worst part of it is, so you do it, so you make history, you go down solo to a thousand meters and set records and things like that. And it's great. It's very satisfying. It's just that nobody else cares. <laughs>